Good morning, everybody. I'm Prospector Jerry. We're on another adventure. I've been to some pretty amazing places in the last few years here in the hills of California in search of gold and adventure. I've found plenty of both, and today I wanted to go over some of my best finds that I've had throughout the years. Most of the time, it's smaller gold we find. Look at this thing. Once in a while, we run into one of these. We explore these hills via many different ways. Sometimes it's as simple as driving up in a short hike. Other times, a motorcycle is a necessity. The motorcycles that we use have been modified with special trailers to help carry our gear deep into these valleys. Other times, we'll take a side-by-side -side as we could carry much more gear and a person. Sometimes we stay the night out in these situations and we try to make the best of it while we're there. It sure is beautiful out in these hills and the gold is just the same. I've been prospecting these areas for quite some time, though I've only started to film my adventures recently. There's been all different types of methods I've used to find this gold, though the excitement is always the same. Quiet, quiet. God, you quiet. <laughs> in this video, I bring you some of my best finds that I've found throughout the years here in the Motherlode region of California. Believe it or not, gold is not that easy to find, at least in large quantities, so finds like these are fairly rare. Keep in mind that this is not my full-time occupation. This is a hobby of mine, a passion that I enjoy sharing through my videos. I do not do this for the money or necessarily the value of the gold itself. I do this for the adventure and the thrill of finding gold. Many people spend just as much, if not more, money on their hobby. This one provides an outlet from normal life while also giving back a little, sometimes a lot more than a little. In this video, I want to go over some of my better finds throughout the year, as well as a general location and storyline behind each of them. I'm going to start off with my first decent piece of gold that I had ever found. At the time when I found it, I was calling it a nugget, but now that I'm used to the size of gold that's found, I'd say it's more of a large picker. A picker is what we call a piece of gold that you're able to pick up with your fingers. This gold was found along a stretch of heavily claimed river, the North Fork of the Middle Fork American River to be exact. This area is extremely rich and like I mentioned very heavily claimed due to the gold that has been found here. Usually on the larger side, more chunkier gold than smaller gold is found here. This gold was actually found on a GPAA membership claim. The GPAA is a great resource for finding gold if you're a first timer and you don't know where to go or where to look. Finding open ground that is not claimed is almost as hard as finding the gold itself. And the GPAA holds many claims in many different states, so it's a very valuable resource for people just getting started. My mining partner and I at the time were both members, so we met up here on the said claim on the stretch of river and began prospecting we hit a stretch of bedrock that looked great to us. We weren't doing very good throughout the day, but suddenly we hit a patch of bedrock that started to produce much larger size gold. That is pretty I found awesome. this piece of gold from a crevice, more like a small pocket deep inside the bedrock. I had to use a special tool to dig it out. My partner at the time, Prospector Eric, had also found a really nice piece of gold not very far away from this one. Uh, my biggest piece right there. Probably about a gram. We were both ecstatic. No words can describe the way it felt to find such a nice piece of gold for the very first time. Little did I know this was only the beginning to a long golden journey ahead of me. My next big find, which is still one of my most favorite finds to date, had come about two years later. I had found an open area of ground that was very hard to access, 
and myself and my dad and my brother all brought our motorcycles on this extreme adventure trying to locate this stretch of river. Unfortunately, this is all the video I have of this trip. I wish I was able to film more, but my GoPro battery died once we got to the water. This stretch of river that is located above the middle fork of the American River is known as the Rubicon River. It is extremely remote and extremely hard to access, one of the hardest areas I've ever tried to get to. This is possibly why the gold was as good as it was this day. When we finally arrived at the stretch of river that I had been eyeing, we began to prospect and separated from each other. I soon lost track of my dad and spent most of the day looking for him. When I finally did locate him, he was happy as can be panning away at what was some fine gold in a decent amount. The day was getting late and we decided we should probably pack up, but I wanted to do one more pan from a nice crack that I had found way up high on the river. As I sifted by hand through the rocks in my half-inch Garrett classifier, I was about to throw out the debris when I saw a flash of gold inside the classifier. I pulled out what looked like golden tinfoil balled up upon itself. This thing was heavy. I knew right away just from the weight of it I had found an awesome piece of gold. This is still my favorite just based on how it looks and it hasn't traveled very far and started off as what would have been more of a leaf or reef style gold. It's very unique and to this day I haven't seen too many pieces like it. Some may consider it a nugget while some may say it's a very big flake. I'll consider it one of my best finds of all time. This next find was very interesting at the time that I found it because I knew I had found something special but not gold, perhaps something even more valuable and rare. Not knowing too much about what I had found, I almost threw it out, but I'm glad I didn't because what I had found actually turned out to be a small platinum nugget. Now there are a few ways that you can determine whether it's platinum or not. At the time, I thought maybe it was just a piece of gold coated in mercury. Upon further inspection and trying to cook off this mercury with no luck, I began to realize what I actually had was a piece of platinum. If it were silver, it would have weighed much less. This thing was pretty heavy. A good way to test for platinum would be to check its reaction with hydrogen peroxide, as platinum will act as a catalyst within the hydrogen peroxide and force bubbling. Now silver will also do the same. I knew this wasn't silver just based off of the weight. This piece weighed considerably more than a piece of gold the same size, and platinum is heavier than gold, so everything has pointed at this being platinum. I later found out that the stretch of river that I found this on was actually known historically for platinum discoveries, though in very small amounts. This platinum nugget came from a stretch of the Middle Fork American River, much lower than the last two locations by a far amount. The location is actually known as Cherokee Bar, which is within the Auburn State Rec Area, an area with land that is not claimable and is designated for recreation and gold panning. I've had very little luck here with gold. It's very sparse in the bedrock and the other diggings that I have found, but I did manage to find this piece of platinum, a very rare and interesting find for sure. By this time in my golden career, I was hooked on prospecting and a new door opened for me as I purchased my first mining claim. This claim was much different from the larger rivers that I had once prospected on. This was a creek, but yet in a very rich area where the gold was known to be a little bit larger in size. Very little fine gold is found here in this creek, but when you do find a piece, it's usually a picker or larger. Working this claim is very hard work as there's very little exposed bedrock and it's hard to get equipment in and out, making it a place that is much needed to be worked on a larger scale. There's a lot of overburden that needs to be moved in order to get to the gold rich bedrock below. This claim is near a town called Georgetown. This area is known for larger gold historically. 
The town was once called Growlersburg, and the legend has it that this name was because of the sound of the larger nuggets as they growled in the pans of the prospectors. I find it very interesting that one of these pieces is a piece of wire gold that hasn't traveled very far, telling me that the source of this piece is probably not too far away. To protect the location of this still active mining claim, I'm going to leave the exact creek name out of this one. I still have much work to do here and much more gold to find. These next finds are an accumulation of finds, I should say. They come from a couple of different trips, actually. The first trip was a trip out, and I'll post a link to that video above. This trip in particular, I found a crack, and this crack had an accumulation of pickers inside. Quite a bit, actually. More than I've ever found in one place. We've made our way back to this location many times, and it's dubbed Picker's Paradise because of the size of gold that we find here. This particular trip, I found this accumulation of pickers, and on another trip, I had found even more pickers and a couple of larger size pieces that are almost what I would call nuggets. I found these pieces with the metal detector as they were large enough to hear. Sometimes you get accumulation of gold, which is a lot of smaller pieces that add up into one spot, and you could hear those with the metal detector as well. The two larger pieces that I found are actually in one video. I'll post a link to that video above as well. What's interesting about these finds and this location is that on this stretch of river, you don't really find too many larger pieces except for this one location. The gold must be coming from somewhere up above. This gold came from an area that we called Picker's Paradise, which is on the South Fork Yuba River. As much as I would like to give away this exact location, this is a place where we do a lot of our filming still today, and I still have a lot of gold to find here yet. This river is one of the richest areas that we've ever prospected. It seems that almost everywhere you dig, there's some gold to be found. The next find and final find of this video is my best find to date. I'd say it's my best find based off of weight. This hefty nugget weighs in at almost 10 grams. That's about a third of a troy ounce. I was absolutely shocked when I found this piece with my metal detector. It was in a bedrock crack in a small creek. When I pulled this piece of gold out from the crack, I could not believe my eyes, and neither could my mining partner. <laughs> No words could describe how it felt to make that find. I hope to again one day experience that feeling again. Here's the quick story behind this find. I was prospecting at a buddy's house. This is actually a creek in his backyard on private property. This creek is located very close to the town of Coloma. Coloma is the epicenter for the original 1849 gold rush. Coloma was where James Marshall originally discovered gold, which set off a huge gold rush here in the 1849 era. So when Bennett, or Bedrock Bennett I should say, as we've nicknamed him, decided he wanted to host this event at his place, we didn't argue at all. Our group of prospecting friends met up here for what was our end of the year barbecue. This was a time where we all got together and celebrated our end of the year by showing off all of our finds and having a nice dinner. Bennett was kind enough to show us around the area, along with letting us do some prospecting and metal detecting on this dry creek bed. We were the stragglers left behind making our way back up to the house as the barbecue was just getting started, when suddenly I got a really great signal in a crack, and the rest is history. This is actually documented in a video, and I have a link posted to that video above. This find was almost like an omen of sorts to me. 
It was found at the end of the year barbecue, a time where we all get together and reflect on our finds. So the timing was perfect to find the monster nugget, which was my best find ever. It's definitely a memory that I will never forget. An amazing time where all of us were together at once to share this awesome discovery. So there you have it, all of my best finds to date in my gold prospecting journey. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been wanting to share these finds for a long time now. If you did enjoy this video, I really hope that you would consider subscribing and hit that notification bell as we put out a lot of gold related content and some amazing adventures. I thank you for watching and as always, I wish you heavy pans.